Welcome back guys to another crossover. It's your boy Marky Mark. I'm gonna go straight up to our WhatsApp in the NBA where we're gonna go through NBA related topics right now. And we're gonna go straight up to JR to kind of go through mm -hmm. our WhatsApp in the NBA stuff. So we have some breaking news. So Kyrie Irving is actually be gonna have some knee surgery on one of his knees. He's gonna be out four to six months. That means he's gonna miss the playoffs and the rest of the season. What does that mean for the Raptors? Well, first, let's talk about the Boston Celtics. Boston is trying to fight for that first seed. Doesn't look like they're gonna make it to the first seed or clinch that first seed spot. What do you guys think uh, affects Boston for now? Bo what, what, do you, what do you guys think Kyrie, Kyrie Irving's injury um, affects Boston Celtics' run in the playoffs this year? Um, well, obviously it means the world to that team, right? But Brad Stevens, is, he's a great coach, one of my favorite coaches. He's been doing a good job of making sure everyone else is picking up the slack when, where they need to. But for their playoff run, like, I think they're, they're going to play hard, obviously, but I think they're really focusing on next year when they could have a healthy Kyrie and a healthy Gordon here in the mix. Mm -hmm. And it's all about that long term. And mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your thoughts on, you know, Boston trying to make that longer run and probably make, obviously make a run in this year's playoffs, but obviously looking long term with when they have Gordon Haywood and Kyrie Irving back yeah, next, in the next few years. Sure. I completely agree with Mark. Uh, for this year, pretty much I think they're done uh, because Kyrie Irving's their go-to guy. Uh, they need, in the playoffs, it's a whole different story than regular season in playoffs. You need that one guy to get the ball in the bucket for you. Kyrie was that guy. And uh, without him now, I think the hope of Boston Celtics are down. But they still have a great future ahead of them. Brad Stevens, great coach. Mm -hmm. Gordon Hayward, uh, Kyrie. And then think this year, I think it's just more about developing Jalen Brown uh, and um, Jason Tatum. Uh, those guys are going to be key pieces for them in the future. And uh, they'll be a scary team, but for this year, they're done. <laughs> so not this year. I agree. But yeah. for this year, this team, the Toronto Raptors, have a chance. The East is wide open. Well, Cleveland's in, still in the way. But what do you think how this will affect the Toronto Raptors themselves yeah. when they're trying to clinch that first seed? And they might potentially face Boston in the playoffs. Yeah, well, right now, the, uh, the door is wide open for them, right? Boston took a hit. Um, Cleveland there. People don't fear them as much as before, even though they're, they still have to be feared. They got LeBron. But right, if, like, if there's any time, it's right now for the Raptors. Mm -hmm. That's true. I completely agree. Uh, it's now or never for Raptors. Uh, everyone says to wait till LeBron's retired, but this is the best team Raptors have ever had. And if it's not now, then it won't be for It's tough to while. wait for LeBron to retire when he's <laughs> such know. a good shape. And this is, I think, the best Raptors team we've seen too. And, and if you think about it in the past history, I think this was a better team in terms of depth and, and the star players. Even, you know, looking back at the Carter days, like Vince Carter days, mm -hmm. I think this was the best in terms of the coaching too, the defense and the way they move the ball and the way they shoot threes too. Definitely. And now, you know, we're just nearing to the end of the regular season. Now we've got to think about awards, awards for the coach of the year, most improved player, sixth man of the year. So we have a list actually, we draw it up with uh, Mike and Mark helped us out. Uh, who do you guys think could be coach of the year for this season? Dwayne Casey. Yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne Casey. Dwayne. Why, why, why do you think Dwayne Casey? Uh, so in my opinion, I think Dwayne Casey because he's first in the East, uh, he's changed the way he's, his style of play. He changed it uh, dramatically. You know, everyone used to knock him for having that ISO basketball. As, al although we still have it here and there, uh, he, ch he changed dramatically. And that's hard to do when you're a coach, like when you have your own uh, style of play and then you have to change it. It's tough, but he adapted and uh, his players adapted as well. So I think the fact that he's first in the East and changed everything about his game style, uh, he deserves coach mm -hmm. of the year. Mark, what do you think? No, yeah, just, I agree with what he said. And just to add on to that, like, the Raptors still have a chance to get to 60 wins, right, if, if I'm correct? Yeah. So if, you've, if, he, if he can get the Raptors to 60 wins, that solidifies it for me. Because, yeah, he's, he's been great all year with all the critics. He just, he's, been, he's been doing great stuff. So, Dwayne, if you're watching this. <laughs> could be coach of the yeah. year as well. We can give love to, like, uh, to the best also in the West. Like, uh, I would say uh, Mike D'Antoni could, mm -hmm. um, could be as well because of the fact that um, not only that was he able to be, you know, be one of the best teams in the first in the West is hard to do when you have Golden State in, in there and also have to go through injuries. Like Chris Paul missed a bunch of games. Uh, uh, Harden missed a lot of games as well. So for him to be able to still be top in the West with a tough West with players like that going down and missing games, uh, even Capella as well, like mm -hmm. went down with a couple of injuries. So it's good to see that he's still able to keep that number one spot in a tough West. Definitely. Yeah. We're definitely going to see who, what, what happens in the next few days when who 
probably turn out who will be coach of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, moving towards mo who is the most improved player, we could drop down names. You know, Victor Oladipo has been playing well in, in Indiana, and then Yusuf Nurkic and Ingram. Who do you guys think is going to be winning that most um, improved? Well, for me, it's, I definitely don't. It's not for me. It's not Nurkic. Mm -hmm. um, I had him in fantasy. He's been playing uh, terrible all year. So like, cross, definitely cross, no, cross, cross off my list. Okay. Cross he off my he list. is one of the biggest reasons why the Blazers are where they are. Yeah. Like, defensively, he's cross been. Cross off my list now. Uh, Maybe he's not a fantasy player, <laughs> no. but he's, uh, yeah. he's not, a. Good not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> How are you, I choose Oladipo. Uh -huh. um, I think he developed a lot from learning from Westbrook last year. Mm -hmm. Came over to Indiana and just took over. I think he deserves uh, most improved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mark, what do you think? Uh, for me, like, I was actually looking at Oladipo too. Uh, we can give love to uh, players like uh, Giannis who made a lot of improvements as well in his game. People don't think he's most improved but because of the fact that he made improvements last year. But I feel like he took his game to another level this year where he just kind of dominated the paint. Uh, if he just gets that jump shot like next year, he could be another candidate for most improved. Mm -hmm. So on the sky's the limit for him. But I, I would, I, I'm very strong on Oladipo. But I would give a case to a player like Giannis, who kind of took the team on his back. You know, I wish Giannis yeah. could be that MVP this year, but I think he's still too young. I think yeah. in the future he will uh, probably get one of those awards. Now moving to six man, the six man uh, awards, uh, Lou will is probably in that conversation as well, and probably a conversation as most improved as well. Especially in the later half and into the brand in the new year, uh, like 2018, he's been playing really well. So, uh, six man of the year, Lou Will, Eric Gordon, Andre Iguodala, and even Fred Van Vliet is trying to make a case. Who do you mm -hmm. guys think will be six man of the year this year? Well, you just got to go with Lou Will, like 100. <laughs> six man, like I'm Lou Will. <laughs> That's true. He has a great reputation for being six man. Mm -hmm. uh, he just took over Clippers, like he's just the go-to scorer. Uh, yeah. Blake Griffin's gone now, so he's he's six man. <laughs> Sure. He, he became their best player when, like, you know, Blake Griffin was injured. <coughs> so I had a stretch, right? Mm -hmm. So the only knock on him, I would say, like, he started a lot of games when, um, when Blake Griffin was down. Uh, Danilo Gallinari was out. I think Milos was out for a, a long time, too. He kind of just became their best player. That's why he made a lot of, you know, noise in terms of making the All-Star. Uh, for me, like, I would go with the straight six-man really role for the rest of the season that he really did was with Eric, Eric Gordon. Like, he's averaging, a, <coughs> you know, 19 points a game, which is, you know, a great... Number, you know, he just scores buckets and he mm. just makes threes. That's kind of what he only had to do at Houston, and he, he did that pretty well for them. That's what the reason why they're best. And uh, the only reason why I think he would get the awards because they have the best record in the in the West, and he scores more than uh, he has almost the same amount of points as Luol. Yeah. So yeah, and definitely going to see what happens with that. Uh, yeah. Now we talked to, uh, off camera about Defensive Player of the Year because we know there's not many people that we could say who could be Defensive Player of the Year. We could say Gobert, but Gobert hasn't been playing that well. Uh, maybe Joel Embiid or even Paul George. Who, who do you guys think could be probably Defensive Player of the Year? Uh, so honestly, it, that's a tough one this year as well because many people have been in and out. Paul George has been really good with uh, steals, mm -hmm. but overall, I think defensive player, I'd say either Anthony Davis or maybe Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. uh, just the way they impact the floor and uh, how they could guard multiple positions and how they get a lot of sh uh, block shots as well. So I think I I'd personally say Kevin Durant or Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. Mark. Oh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say Kevin Durant. Like, I can see where you're coming from, but I'm just going to go with AD, like the, that stretch where he, he had like all those games with high number of blocks and steals, just like his length and ability to change shots, just what else would you want from a big man? And probably that changed when Boyd Cousins went down as well. <laughs> Mark, yeah. well, what do you think? I would say actually AD, I'm a big, um, in terms of what he had to do to carry the Pelicans to where they are right now, that's something that I think many of us were expecting them to kind of be in a lot arena after the Cousins injury. Mm. And, and for AD to step up, not only in the offensive end, where he just had like 40, 20 games with like three steals, five blocks, kind of in numbers that you rarely see. Uh, and, and the fact that uh, he carried the load offensively and defensively for a team that people thought were not going to be in the playoffs, that just is a very impressive thing to do. And so if, if our vote account, I think Davis, you were, would you win the uh, Defensive Player of the Year? Now, this year's rookie class was actually pretty good. It was really good with Jason Tatum, uh, Mitchell, um, could probably say Ben Simmons as well. Who do you guys think could be rookie of the year? I, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Donovan Mitchell. Who do you guys think? I go against it. I'm like, Mitchell, Mitchell is nice. Like, he had the dunk contest. He's been having, he's been, he's one of the reasons the Jazz are where they are right now. But like, mm -hmm. you got to go with Simmons. Just the way he impacts the, the game on so many different assets. He just scoring, rebounding, assists, playmaking. He, 
there's as much as Mitchell does, he, he what he does doesn't compare to what Ben does. So mm -hmm. that's why I pick Ben Simmons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also pick Ben Simmons because of everything he's doing on the court. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, not many people consider him as a rookie, but yeah. this is his first official season. So I would give it to him because he basically averages a triple double. He's a six six nine six ten point guard. Mm -hmm. He plays video games. <laughs> Fortnite, <laughs> you know, if, Fortnite, PUBG. <laughs> yeah, if you've seen those videos, of him, yeah. Kind of uh, yeah, Ben Simmons just does it all, and uh, once he gets that jump shot down, he'll be scary. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. It's hard to, it's hard to, you know, nobody cares whether he, it's his first year or not. This is his, you know, rookie year. And I think it's hard to knock on the things that he's doing right now. It's something that you rarely see in a point guard. Like they mentioned before, only Oscar Robertson are doing the kind of things on the rookie year as when Ben Simmons is doing. And once he has that jump shot, I don't know what, you know, he could really do in the NBA. It's kind of scary. And with that, in that 76ers team, they could be a really, really dangerous team. The playoffs, uh, yeah. Finally, MVP. I think we all know who's going to be MVP. Mm -hmm. You guys want, you want to, you guys will all say it together? <laughs> Sounds good. Three, two, <laughs> one. James Harden. Harden. Yeah. Right, okay, okay, there we go. James Harden, you will be our MVP for this year. Hopefully we'll see that happen. Think, and we'll probably see that in the playoffs as well.